Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic uh, on the arbitrability of consumer disputes in India. Recently we have had a couple of judgments from the Supreme Court of India. Uh, to discuss the topic I have Shweta and Ritika with me. Uh, they are senior members of our dispute resolution practice. Uh, so to start uh, with the basics Shweta, could you tell us the current position of Indian law on this subject? I understand that there have been a couple of judgments and recently uh, the Supreme Court has conclusively dealt with the earlier cases. Uh, just give us a roadmap as to what happened and what is the existing position of law. Thank you, Alipak. So Indian courts have recently clarified that consumer disputes are arbitrable only if the consumer opts for it post-dispute, irrespective of any pre-existing arbitration agreements. Uh, Ritika, can you shed light on the essence of the recent Supreme Court ruling on this? Sure, Shweta. So, in the recent case of M. Himlata Devi vs. B. Udayasi, the Supreme Court ruled that it can refuse to appoint an arbitrator under Section 11 of the Arbitration Act if the consumer opts to approach consumer courts instead. This underscores the principle that consumers shouldn't lose out on specialized remedies which have been provided under the Consumer Protection Act. So moving forward, I think, uh, then how does this decision compare with Supreme Court's earlier judgment in MRMTA versus Afta Singh? My recollection is that in the MR case, the court had held that consumers may not be mandated to refer to arbitration if they opt to approach the consumer courts. So the Hemlata Devi case extends MR's reasoning to applications under Section 11 of the Arbitration Act as well, which is for appointment of arbitrators and to the Consumer Protection Act 2019, as you may be aware, we come, came up with a new Consumer Protection Act. Earlier, it was in 1986. The MR case has dealt with applications for referral to arbitration under Section 8 of the Arbitration Act and the previous statute of the Consumer Law. So, Ritika, moving forward, could you give us a brief rundown of the facts of this case? Then maybe it will help us to better understand and dissect the judgment. Sure, Adipa. So, this case actually involved a construction contract which had an arbitration clause in it. The contract provided that a builder was supposed to construct and deliver a villa within three years to the consumer. Now, this builder actually failed to deliver the villa on time and instead they sought to terminate the contract and initiate arbitration instead. So, he filed an application under Section 11 of the Arbitration Act before the Telangana High Court and he sought the appointment of an arbitrator. Now, at the same time, the consumer instead filed a complaint with the District Consumer Court. So, what was the outcome at the High Court? I mean, the Telangana High Court. Right. So, the Telangana High Court actually dismissed the builder's Section 11 application. And they advised them that you can actually go and seek a referral from the District Consumer Forum instead. Now, the builder went and did that, but that also got uh, rejected. The District Consumer Forum didn't actually refer the matter to arbitration. So the, the the builder then subsequently filed a review application before the Telangana High Court where he challenged the first order where the Telangana High Court had actually directed him to go to the District Consumer Forum instead. And the Telangana High Court dismissed this review application also saying that because you acted on the first order, you can't really seek a review of it anymore. And now both of these orders of the High Court, the builder then went on to challenge before the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court dismissed the builder's challenge as well. and. It, it upheld the orders of the Telangana High Court. Could you also explain the rationale behind Supreme Court's judgment? So I'll just step in here. The Supreme Court emphasized that the consumer disputes which are protected under the Consumer Protection Act is essentially a welfare legislature. And these disputes are non-arbitrable unless the consumer opts for arbitration post-dispute. The consumer's decision to approach the consumer forum rendered the dispute non-arbitrable and thus no arbitrator could be appointed under Section 11 of that. So I think given what you said, Shweta, it seems like a significant step in prioritizing consumer rights. How does this align with the trend in consumer rights globally? Maybe so you this, could answer. Sure, Alipa. So this ruling largely aligns with global trends in consumer protection. We have seen that many jurisdictions actually focus on upholding the protections given by their domestic consumer protection laws. And this they give this protection to consumers even if these consumers had actually entered into arbitration agreements previously. 
maybe in the next podcast we'll look more into what these positions are and specifically a recent decision of the UK courts on this issue as well.